Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include EU's latest bloomer, Brussels bid to ban gardeners from buying favourite iris, lavender and clematis. Germany plans banking union without treaty change. Lib Dems to cave in and back a vote on leaving the EU. Polar Bear Nut gets protection from European Court. Plus, EU preparing sanctions for new member Croatia. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. Welcome to the Nightly News. We've spent uh, the last couple of days rebuilding the studio and resetting up some new equipment. So we hope that you don't notice the changes too much and the format stays largely the same. But hopefully we'll see some improved quality in the video production and also um, some of the sound and audio. So uh, anyway, without further ado, here's today's first story. First, from our homepage. Thousands of favourite British garden plants and flowers could be banned from sale at garden centres under new EU proposals. The popular Lavender Lavendula Hedicote, the highly scented Iris Jane Phillips, the holly shrub known as Ilex Golden King and the pink star-shaped Clematis Nelly Mosa are among those at risk. A European Commission shake-up of plant legislation proposes that in future, each plant variety must be given a detailed scientific description, as well as being listed on an official plant register. But the UK does not have an official register of plants, and experts say it would be too expensive and take years to set up. As a result, unregistered plants could be removed from sale in garden centres and other shops. Well, well, in talking with Trevor Coleman, MEP and producer of this show, he often talks about the speaking presentations he gave 10 to 15 years ago, explaining how everything, yes, everything, would be licensed and regulated under a tome of bureaucratic directives and legislation. But I bet even he never anticipated the balmy bureaucrats in Brussels would stamp license regulation on his Nelly Moser. Until now, Germany has insisted that a system of common rules to shut or fix struggling banks would require a change in the Lisbon Treaty, requiring approval from the EU's 28 member states. However, officials in Berlin are drawing up plans to force through a union without treaty change, according to Reuters. Bypassing the need for a treaty change would make the process of creating a banking union far quicker. Treaty changes are often opposed by one or more countries and often subject to lengthy referenda in member states, meaning that the process can take years. Eurozone officials insist that the currency bloc needs a banking union in order to restore confidence to the region and encourage banks to lend. Well, OK, friends, here is the what's really going to happen. I find the timing of this announcement a little more than coincidental, given Fraulein Merkel just got re-elected. However, we have been telling you all along that this talk of treaty change was just a smokescreen. The EU needs no such treaty change, and for those of you that have been to one of our The Word public speaking events, you'll know that the Lisbon Treaty was the final nail in the coffin for democracy in Europe. The Passerelle Clause of that treaty grants the EU the power to create powers where it does not have them already. Friends, these are the facts. You cannot fight this institution from within, and you will be assimilated into a federal United States of Europe. And this story demonstrates that power. In one swoop, the EU is proposing to integrate and control every financial institution and bank across all 28 nations. Does that not strike you as an incredible power for a simple trading and customs union? The Lib Dems are set to give in to public pressure and offer voters hope of an in-out referendum on Britain's membership of the European Union. Party sources revealed last night. Nick Clegg plans to include a referendum pledge in his party's next manifesto. The move will leave Labour as the only mainstream party resisting demands for voters to have a say in the country's links with Brussels. It's another boost to the Daily Express's crusade for Britain to quit the EU. 
Ah, oh, I see. Chairman Cameron and his sidekick, the assistant dishwasher to the dishwasher's mate, Nick Clegg, have executed a brilliant pincer movement on poor old Deadwood Millidim. The owners of Nut, the Berlin polar bear reared by zookeepers after his mother abandoned him, won a European court challenge over the EU-wide trademark to the animal's name. The EU General Court in Luxembourg ruled in favour of the Berlin Zoo's bid to get European trademark rights to the bear's name. The zoo is in litigation with the UK company Nut IP Management over the names Nut and Nut der Eisebär and won a first round at the block's trademark authority in March 2010. Nut, who died in 2011 at the age of four, boosted visits to the Berlin Zoo with his birth in 2006 by 21%. He was featured on the cover of Vanity Fair with Leonardo DiCaprio and television channels documented the cub's every move as he learned to swim and slurped milk out of a bottle. The European Union's newest member, Croatia, is facing imminent EU sanctions over a new law banning extradition of suspected criminals. Such sanctions could involve suspending EU funds for Croatia's border controls. They would be an embarrassment for the Balkan country just two months after it joined the bloc. The law was adopted just a day before Croatia's formally became an EU member on July the 1st. It prohibits Croatian citizens from being extradited to foreign countries, which goes against EU practice. Well, this news will have the Croatians up in arms, or perhaps that should read, this news will have the Croatians' arms up. Today in our video library, let's take a look at the state of the nation in Greece. In this video, anti-fascist fury as protest against Golden Dawn turns violent in Greece. Now, just as you'll recall from over two years ago when we interviewed Dr. Eric Edmund, violence on the streets was the prediction, and Dr. Edmund was right on the money. This video demonstrates the tragedy that has unfolded in Greece. Its national political leaders are weak, compromised by the might and power of the EU troika. The people can affect nothing to improve their situation, and so begins the inexorable rise of the right. The media paints the picture of Nazism harking back to the days of pre-war Germany in the 1930s. And whilst the correlations look strikingly similar, is it the same? Well, at this point, I think not. Pre-war Germany was intent on an external war and was busy building a mighty military that Hitler would use to great effect in the Blitzkrieg. This is not the intention of the Greeks. They find themselves unable to feed their families, unable to get places in schools for their children, unable to get employment or social welfare. They cannot protect their families, so they ask the question, where is my nation? What has happened to all the things that me and my family have paid for? Gone. Sold out for cents on the euro. The politicians usurped and dictated to by the EU troika. What will it take to end this madness? Well, sadly, it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon. The kleptocrats say their Excel spreadsheets are showing a recovery and that austerity is working. Behind the A-rated, low-carbon, self-cleaning glass of the Bruswellian Parliament buildings, all is well with Project Federation Europe. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.